Hello and welcome to our discussion of managerial accounting cost volume profit analysis also known as CVP. In this lecture specifically we're going to be talking about CVP and how it relates to break-even analysis. So first of all what is CVP analysis? Cost volume profit. This particular type of analysis examines the relationship amongst revenues, costs, and profits as the volume of activity changes. So that's where the term cost, volume, profit comes from. So we need to understand how the selling prices will change and how the, varying, how the various costs will change when activity levels change, either increase or decrease. Now there are a few assumptions before we can use this cost, volume, profit analysis. First of all, we have to be able to identify costs as either fixed or variable. So if we have any mixed costs that are both fixed and variable, we have to be able to allocate that and spread it out amongst its variable and fixed components before we can even apply CVP analysis. In addition, another assumption that comes into play is the, sim is the same one that comes into play for all managerial accounting. The total cost has to be linear within the relevant range. So we can't deal with economic curves. We have to deal with a straight line cost. There is only one cost driver at play here. In other words, when we're talking about the activity level changing, we're only talking about one thing. Either the number of units sold is changing, or maybe we say the number of dollars of sales. We can only deal with one of those at a time. Now the other assumption we'll make here is that we either only have one product or if we have multiple products we have a sales mix that remains constant. Now that particular section is something we're going to talk about in another lecture altogether. How to deal with CVP when we have multiple uh, products and a sales mix. So to really understand CVP analysis, let's just take a look at the profit equation first of all. Now this is a straightforward equation. On one hand we have our total revenues. That is, that is calculated by taking the number of units sold multiplied by the selling price per unit in dollars. Those are our total revenues at that activity level. We subtract out our fixed cost which is just one number and then we subtract out our variable costs which are the number of units sold multiplied by the variable cost per unit in dollars. So revenues minus fixed costs minus variable costs gives us profit. Pretty straightforward. A cost is either fixed or variable. Now the assumption here is that as activity levels increase our total revenue should increase as well. Assuming we have the same sales price per unit, we sell more units, of course the total revenues are going to increase. Total variable costs should increase as well for the same reason. So, uh, increasing number of units multiplied by the same variable cost per unit, total variable cost should increase. But within our, f our relevant range, within our capacity, the fixed cost in total should remain the same. Now that is really that the fact that one of the costs stays the same and one changes is what gives rise to CVP analysis. It's why we need it to analyze at different activity levels. We'll talk about that in a bit. So we have our variable costs first of all. These are things like direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead. Those are our variable product costs. However, we also have to consider that we have variable selling and administrative costs. Even though those are not product costs, they are still variable costs and they're part of our overall profit calculation. By the way, we're not looking at just gross profit which is basically only subtracting out the product cost. We're instead looking at overall profit, kind of a net profit figure or net income that has to subtract out all of our expenses period and product. 
So we're going to take a look at a new term. Now this term, this contribution margin, is key to understanding cost, volume, profit analysis. So here we have our revenues per unit multiplied by the number of units sold. We're subtracting out our variable costs per unit multiplied by the number of units sold. Now by the way, these variable costs will be both our product variable costs and our variable period overhead. It's not just product costs. That gives us our contribution margin per unit sold. And of course, we multiply that by the number of units sold. We have a total contribution margin. Now I'll come back to that term in just a second. After that, we subtract the fixed expenses, and that leaves us with operating income. Now again, the fixed expenses, those are going to be product expenses as well as period expenses, not just product related. So a couple of things here. This may look similar to your normal income statement where you have revenues, but then we normally subtract out product costs, in other words, cost of goods sold, to get to a gross profit figure. So that's the different subtotal here. Here we have contribution margin instead of gross product, gross profit. Then after that, we normally subtract out period expenses to get operating income. So basically this contribution margin format, instead of looking at a differentiation between product and period costs, we're now distinguishing between variable and fixed costs. Whether or not they relate to product or period, that part doesn't matter. We just want to know are they variable and are they fixed. So now let's take a look at this concept of contribution margin. Revenues minus variable costs give us the contribution margin. The whole concept of a contribution margin is that this is the money that's left over after taking your revenues minus variable expenses. This is the money left over to contribute to covering your fixed expense and hopefully leaving you with some net profit. So the reason this is so important is that both revenues and variable costs change as the activity level changes, but fixed cost does not. So it makes sense to have those two revenues and variable expenses on top. They can change, they can increase or decrease. That'll impact the contribution margin and we'll know how much we have to cover fixed expenses. So if you think about it, the more you sell, the more of that contribution that's building up to finally cover your fixed expenses and hopefully leave you with some operating income. That's the thought behind it. So we have contribution margin per unit. Basically that is just your revenues per unit minus your variable costs per unit gives you contribution margin per unit. Another concept that's important is the contribution margin ratio. This is basically the percentage of every sales dollar that is left in contribution margin. So contribution margin per unit divided by sales per unit gives you a contribution margin ratio. Or you could also take your contribution margin in total divided by your sales in total. That would still give you the same contribution margin ratio. We will need both of those concepts for CVP analysis. One of the main tools, but certainly not the only tool, but one of the main tools in CVP analysis is that of break-even analysis. Now, break-even analysis just tells us how many units we need to sell to cover just our fixed costs with no profit left over. Now, if you think about it, what company wants to end up with zero profit? Not very many companies. However, this is important for risk analysis. Even though you don't want to end up with zero profit, you want to at least make sure you can hit that point. You certainly don't want to have a loss. So you need to figure out what is the number of units you need to sell just to break even, and then you shoot your target above that. If your break-even point is 100 units, 
you want to sell way above 100, but you at the very minimum want to sell 100. You absolutely do not want to sell just 99 or 98, 97, because then you're operating at a loss. So now the question is, how do we calculate break-even point? We can calculate it in the number of units needed to break even or the number of sales dollars needed to break even, whichever works best for us, depending on the data that's given to us. So first of all, let's take the break even point in units. If we want to know how many units we need to sell to break even, we may take fixed costs in total. So in other words, what do we need to cover divided by the contribution margin per unit that is used to cover that fixed expense. So if we have $100,000 in fixed expense, a dollar in contribution margin per unit, it's going to take us 100,000 units to cover enough of that fixed expense. Now the break-even sale point, or the break-even point in sales dollars. This is somewhat unusual because if you knew the break-even point in units, and you knew the sales dollars per unit, right away you know what the break-even point in sales dollars is. However, there may be some problems where you just don't have that data. So if you want to know what your total sales dollars have to be, what you need to do is take your same fixed cost as before, but now we're dividing it by the contribution margin ratio. Not the contribution margin per unit, but the contribution margin ratio. That will give you the sales dollars break-even point. A derivative of this concept is the target profit point. So this tells us how many units do we need to sell, not only to cover our fixed expense, but also to cover a specified amount of profit. Now this is a very easy equation if you understand break-even because the only thing we're changing is the numerator. We're no longer wanting to just cover fixed expense. We're also wanting to cover a target profit as well. So fixed cost plus target profit, if we divide that by the contribution margin per unit, now we know how many units we need to sell to contribute enough to cover our fixed expenses plus a certain amount of profit. If we take our fixed costs plus target profit and we divide it by the contribution margin ratio, then now we know the target profit point in sales dollars.